This video is brought to you by Skillshare. I get tons of comments and questions from people looking for ways to be faster when coloring. And most of the time my answer is something like, well, it comes with time. Like that's not something you can really rush. In this video, I'm going to show you a simple workflow I recently discovered that can streamline your rendering process quite a bit. Now, now rendering being the lighting and shading stage like you're seeing here. I've noticed that I've been able to get more detail into my work in less time using these techniques or the same amount of detail in less time overall. You get what I'm saying. I colored this shadow service color drawn by the incredible Rebecca Isaacs using this method, and I'll reference it to show you how this works step by step. Quick disclaimer, there are a lot of ways to do this. Just because I do this professionally does not mean that this is the only way or even the best way, even though I think it's the best way. And even though I'm using Clip Studio here, this will work in most decent art apps. So if you can't figure it out in your preferred app, leave a comment below and I'll try to help. And if I can, hopefully someone else can. So I already have my flat set up here. And since this trick is really more about rendering light and shadow, I've got plenty of other videos on how to flat. I'll link those in the description. I've got the final product over here on the left and I've got the right side here. I've got it stripped down to just base colors and inks. So, you know, we've got the inks on top and then some base colors on the bottom. Now, in order for this technique to work, we're gonna need to start with the shadows. I've gone over to the final product over here now and I actually stripped it down to just shadows okay so the only thing really here is base colors and some shadows and i'll show you how i did this so uh, i'm going to start uh, just by selecting her dress and i'll make a new layer over here we're going to call it shadows i'm just going to do this on normal mode it doesn't really matter uh, how you do it as far as which blending mode you do so i'll start by selecting the dress and then i'm going to pick this color over here from the other from the original to get that shadow color then we'll come back over here i'm going to hide this selection so i don't have to see that if you want to set your own keyboard shortcut for that in Clip Studio, at least it's selection border. Just I've got it set to Control G, but you can set it to whatever you want. And I'm just gonna kind of I'm using a soft airbrush, nothing fancy. I'm gonna throw in some rough shadows. I'm gonna hit the letter C to switch to the transparency and paint some of this away. And again, this doesn't really have to be perfect for this example, but I wanted to make sure there's a little bit of detail in here so that uh, you guys can see how this works in real time. All right, so now I've got my shadows on the dress. Now, the reason this is important is that these shadows are coming from my primary light source. So what does that really mean? My primary light source is hitting the dress and where it's not hitting the dress, it's causing these shadows. Now, let's say I wanna add some highlights to this. If these highlights are coming from the primary light source, they're not going to enter the shadows because the shadows are caused by that light, right? And so I'll make a new layer and we'll call this one highlights. And I'll, I'll pick a lighting color here. I think I was using hard light for that on this particular one, but it doesn't really matter. But uh, so at this point, if I want to add highlights, there's a couple of ways to do it. But I want my highlights to be contained to the areas that are already lit. And I don't want it in getting into my shadows. And if I tried to do this the same way that I did the shadows, let's say, and, uh, you know, I choose the dress again, hide the selection, make a big airbrush. If I start doing this, you can see that it's, you know, well, it's covering my shadows and I'm starting to lose my shadow detail, right? And that's not what I want. So I'm gonna back this up. We're gonna undo that, Control Z or Command Z. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna select the dress again. And in Clip Studio and in Photoshop, if you hold Control and Alt or Command and Option and click the little picture here, it's going to remove the contents of that layer from my selection. In this case, the shadows. So this is going to prevent me from coloring in the one place that I don't want that light to reach anyway. If I'm doing like a kind of a realistic coloring or a realistic lighting setup here. And again, this is the selection. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna hide it because I don't wanna see this. I'm gonna pick my brush again, go up to my highlight, same color. Now this time, look what happens. You see the difference? It's not splashing over all of those shadows. I've still got my nice shadow detail in here. It's not, you know, going over that at all. It's, it's not, covering it up. It's not changing the color of the shadows at all. I'm getting my light here, you know, splashed over this dress without worrying about covering up my shadows. And even if I zoom up and get into these little details, like these wrinkles, and let's say that I want to, you know, add a, a little bit more detail on these wrinkles. I'm going to start my stroke over here just to show you how th what this looks like. It's not showing up until it crosses the terminator, which is exactly how light really works. Okay. If you are talking about this primary light source, and these shadows, this is how this works in real life too, which is why I think this technique is so cool. So what this allows me to do is it allows me to get those big, soft 
areas of light that I want, especially on something like a fabric that's round, you know, it's curving around. It allows me to get those big soft strokes without having to worry about covering up my shadows. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you'd love this class called Color Masterclass from Victo Nye. It's available from today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. You could pick up some new Procreate skills, get a better grasp of the ins and outs of Clip Studio, learn some cool guitar licks, build a website. There's something for everyone here. I like that there are a curated list of all the top classes in the major categories, so you can jump right into the best classes right from the start. Color Masterclass is one of those. She does a great job explaining some of the weirder and more confusing aspects of color. It's only about an hour and a half, but it is packed with solid lessons on working with color. These classes are designed to fit into a schedule for, you know, busy people. If you're a curious person, you want to learn from professionals, members get unlimited access to thousands of classes with hands-on projects and a massive community of other students. And if you like the tricks I've shown you in today's video, my Clip Studio coloring course is on there too, by the way. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. A yearly subscription costs less than $10 a month. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Look for the link in the description below. So this looks pretty cool. Again, this is really just two colors. We've got some highlights. We've got some shadows. Now, let's say that I want to introduce some light into these shadows. And I did a whole video on this a while back on explaining the technicalities of this. I'll link it in the description. But if my primary light source is the brightest, then the second light source is like the, the fire here. It's not really going to cross that terminator. It's going to stay contained to the shadows for the most part, at least in this kind of simplification of how light works. Now, some of you guys may already see where this is going. If I want to paint light and I want to make sure that it's only contained to my shadows, what am I going to do? I can hold down control on the picture of the shadows, select the shadows, control or command if you're on a Mac. Now, if I go pick like a orange color here, and I'll do this on a separate layer, I'll call this uh, uh, secondary. And you'll notice that if I just like color straight across here, just to show you, that light is only being contained to the shadows because only the shadows are selected. I can get in here and I can be pretty fast with this and not worry about it crossing into, you know, those, those lighter areas unless I want it to, you know, and so, you know, I can paint this under here. Let's just go look at the original. It's prettier anyway. And I actually did all of this light on on one layer. If you, if you look at it uh, like this, you can see I've kind of got this bright pink uh, main light color and then this orange light underneath. I did it all on the same layer. But you could do this on, on a separate layer. I actually intended to do this on a, on a separate layer just so I could control that color better. But it doesn't really matter however you want to do that. And there are other ways that these you know, selections based on layer contents can help <laughs> because like, for example, let's say that I want to go in here and add like uh, some deeper shadows in some areas and darken some parts of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double my shadows. I'm just going to duplicate it. So I'm going to my shadows at duplicate layer. Now it intensifies those shadows. Okay. It makes them darker everywhere. That's not what I want though. I don't want the dark everywhere. I just want there to be some places where it's darker. So I'm going to put a mask on this layer and hide it. Okay. So the little mask button here is uh, in Clip or uh, in Photoshop. It's at the bottom of the layer window. This little uh, square with a circle inside. I'm going to fill that with transparency or black if you're in Photoshop or Procreate. And it hides the contents of that layer because on a mask, black hides. Or transparency actually hides in the, in the way Clip Studio works. Now I can go to my mask and reveal some of those darker areas. All I'm really doing is bringing those dark areas out. They're, they're, they're under here, <laughs> okay? This mask is hiding them. So all I'm doing is revealing them in a few places here where I wanted the shadows to be a little bit deeper. I could do the same thing with my highlights. I could double the highlights, go to my highlights layer, duplicate the layer. Again, a little too intense, more than I want on this particular image right now. So I'm just gonna hide that new duplicate by putting a mask on it. Again, filling that mask with black or transparency to hide it. And now on the mask, I can reveal the areas that I want there to be even brighter highlights. And again, I'm kind of roughing this in here. I didn't actually do this on this piece, but it does look cool. I wish I did. <laughs> so what this effectively does is it gives you really five different values using two colors. We can count them up. We've got our base color. We've got our shadow color. That's two. We've got our deeper shadows. That's three. We've got our highlights, four. 
and our brighter highlights, five. Now, obviously you're not always gonna use the exact same colors and you might wanna do specular highlights, a different color, you know, the color of the lighting or whatever. I have completely sort of reworked my process around this process. Even if you just use this as a shortcut to get started and then paint it all on top of it on one layer, you know, you don't have to have all these different layers if you don't want to for the entire process. You could take all of this, squash it down to one layer and paint on one layer for the rest of it. But it gives you a nice range of colors, a range of hues, you know, without having to like manually select a bunch of things. And it just saves, it saves me a tremendous amount of time in my own work. And I'm hoping this works for you guys too. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And by the way, if you want to watch me color this in real time, my YouTube members have access to all the past YouTube streams. There's a join button right next to the subscribe button. Don't forget to click the bell to get notified. And even if you already have, make sure it's set to all. They changed this recently and make sure it's not set on personalized because then YouTube will decide whether or not they want to notify you. If you like these tricks, you like these tips, my Clip Studio coloring course is on Skillshare too, full of techniques just like this. Again, all the links are in the description. I thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Take care.